up because obviously I need to go home and do all the plans. So just quickly, this is what I do. I just by hand do, <clears throat> excuse me, by hand do all the floor plan measurements, measure absolutely everything. You can see here, this is the main measurement, 3.11. This is the doorway and the site, either the measurement either side, so I can say exactly where the floor, sorry, where the door is. Um, same with everything. I've put radiators, plug points that are currently here, light switches. So yeah, I'll then take these home and put them onto our software where we can actually play around with things and then have all our plans ready for all the trades so that they can know exactly what they're doing, where they need to put everything. We'll even put, in the bedrooms for example, we'll even put where the furniture is, so we can put exactly where we want plug sockets to go if there's any missing extra ones that need to go in. So yeah, I'll show you the next stage when I've done all those floor plans. Right, hello everyone. It is now the 19th of July. Um, it's been a good week since we um, were in the property measuring up and lots has happened. So um, we thought we'd do a big roundup and update of what has happened. Um, but in the last clip that you just saw, uh, Alicia had just done all the floor plans. I think let's start there. I'm gonna give you a screen grab now of the uh, floor plans that she's designed. I think everything's pretty much um, as it will be apart from furniture like the sizes might be slightly different but essentially it's the same so let's show you that now right so we use a piece of software called room sketcher and if I just run through the basics of it so you set up a, a project and you then go into walls um, and you start drawing out what obviously we took the measurements um, in the property and so you start drawing the walls you can go here and you can have thin walls for interior walls thick walls for exterior walls um, and you can change the thickness of them here um, our walls are normally about 13 13 uh, centimeters thick to be honest I, a tip of mine would actually be to do everything in thin walls if you know put them at the 13 centimeters or, or whatever you need to do because if you start trying to do thick walls and thin walls sometimes the software tends to for some reason not be able to cope with it so um, yeah that would be my tip here but yeah basically you just start by drawing everything out you can put windows in you can put doors in um, you go here for that and again with all of these you can equally if I just put one in here just for argument's sake um, if you double click on it and you go to properties then you can actually change the width of the door so say you've got a 760mm uh, door um, you can change that there so it goes exactly how is exactly the size of the doors you're going to be using um, you can also change the orientation of the door so if you've got one opening that way or it goes into the room um, you can change all that obviously X to get rid of it. Uh, so once you've got the main outline of the uh, of the property, you can faff about with materials. I don't tend to because basically, well, I don't need to really. It puts in it puts in a basic floor covering there, and you know I, I don't need to use it for interior design. So then you come down to furniture, and obviously the same as before. So if I click on this bed, for example. I can change the width of it over here. So this is a, a UK standard double size bed. And if I click on this one over here, you can see that this is a small double bed or a four foot bed. So you can change the width and the length of absolutely every single piece of furniture. So shower trays, I can put in exactly the size shower tray that I plan to put in, basins, uh, chest of drawers, etc., etc. So yeah, if I just walk through, um, I think in the tour we started in this room here, so let's start here. Um, so this is gonna be the front bedroom, downstairs bedroom, and over here will be its off-suite bathroom. So this will be solely for the use of the tenant that lives in this room. And then you'll come through here. The reason I've not put the kitchen in the, pla in the plans on, on this piece of software is because the kitchen is actually staying as it is. So. You know, again, there's no point me spending time putting in something when it's going to stay as it is. So I've left that. This, oh, sorry, there should be a door there, but well, there should be a door here. Oh no, sorry, there's not a door there because what's happening here 
is that this wall is going to come down to halfway and to, to this point here and then these kitchen units will go on on what is currently the lounge and so this wall won't actually be there but I left it in just to make sure that the, the two rooms stay the same size is um, it's easier to sort of distinguish between the two then this will be the lounge area as you can see TV um, nice corner sofa and then through to the back bedroom so this is currently the conservatory we're going to be putting in an ensuite um, here and obviously as I said because this um, wall is coming down this then makes this whole area the kitchen which um, when you look at the Lacour's fire guide that then counts as a risk room and any bedroom that's that's exit is onto a risk room must have another exit so that's why if you see here there's going to be an external door to go out to the garden so that if god forbid in the event of a fire this person living in this room if the fire is in the kitchen because obviously that's one of the most likely places a fire would start can just go out um into the garden um right here so uh there's this is pretty much it for downstairs obviously we've put in um you can see here where we can put um, different wardrobe combinations and chest of drawers. Uh, one tip that um, I'd always advise, because in the first property we did, um, there was a couple of rooms where we couldn't do this, and immediately the tenants fed back to us that that this was, um, you know, less desirable. Is make sure that you can get the TV. If you can see this black line here, this is a TV um, opposite the bed, because obviously when people are watching TV in their bedrooms, they're more than likely going to be sat in bed doing so. So that's really important to where possible get the TV opposite the bed obviously here you can see it's just slightly off um, centre but you know that's still fine right so then if you go up to this bit here you can then you can have as many of these floors as you like obviously this is only a two storey um, so I only need two but if you wanted to play around with different layouts and you didn't want to lose um, you know the a layout that you'd done and you just wanted to mess around with it and um, see if some another sort of layout would work better then you can obviously have multiple levels um, and yeah just mess around with them and it will save them all so this is then the upstairs the first floor obviously coming up the stairs here if I go clockwise um, this is the largest bedroom so again full size double uh, you can see in the properties again full size double here uh, two double wardrobes because we can accommodate it a chest four drawer chest of drawers a desk this desk is causing me a little bit of problems because i'm not 100 percent sure at this point in time whether it's best to go like this um or whether the window is going to in fact you know interfere with that but basically it doesn't matter really until um, the furniture goes in because the plug points will be either here or here and, and that makes no difference really um I, one thing I'd say with large rooms, you do want to fill the space where you can. Obviously, you you want to be keeping costs down, but equally, if I only had one wardrobe in here, it's going to look really, really bare and not very uh, homely and welcoming. So sometimes it is just worth putting in a bit extra, um, you know, a bit, a bit more furniture. So rather than having a triple wardrobe in here, we've put a two doubles. Sorry. Um, so, yep, going to the the back left-hand bedroom. Again, as you can see, the TV's opposite the bed. I think this one is also a double, a full-size double. Uh, this is the desk here. This one has got a triple wardrobe. Uh, I'd probably leave this space because tenants do like to sometimes bring their own furniture. Um, and so they might want to put, I don't know, a, a bookshelf or a laundry bin or something there. Um, if you come out here you can see that we've got two bathrooms up here now this bit here I've since had a conversation with the builder because this is actually the current soil stack and it was causing me a bit of problems um, a few problems because if you look at this um, shower tray this is a 700 wide shower tray which is quite skinny really um, but to be able to fit two bathrooms in what is currently one bathroom and um, both with their you know separate shower toilet and basin uh, basically I need all the space I can get so what I've done here is I've done a shower the full width of the 
of the room um, pretty much. So this is a 1200 wide. There is currently a window here, but we're going to have to get rid of that, unfortunately. Um, and then when I've amended this, then this shower tray can actually go and sit there and I can make it into a 760, which six centimeters doesn't sound an awful lot, but it is quite a lot really. Um, especially when we've got the width of, sorry, the, the 1200 um, across. So it should, it should provide quite a bit extra space. And if I go back to the walls, you see that this is 1.84 meters. So when I calculated the width of, or the depth, however you want to describe it, of this shower tray, the width of this basin and the width of the toilet, I think it ends up being that there's about 18 centimeters to play around with Oh, I've got rid of <laughs> got rid of one of the um one of the basins, but that's actually quite good because I don't know if you just saw what I did there. You can actually copy items and paste them, and they will do it to the measurements of the item that you've pasted rather than whatever it was when you selected it from down here. Um, so that's really good. Uh, what was I saying before that? Yes, yeah, so it's there's about 18 centimeters to play with and obviously you don't want to have everything cramped together because being able to clean particularly the toilet and you know down the side of, of the shower so all the glass and things you do need a bit of space for people to get their hands down and arms down to to be able to do a really good job um cleaning them so yeah this this uh soil stack is going to be moved outside so these two bathrooms should be a mirror image of each other i'm not quite sure i'm talking to the builder at the moment which way round is best to do the basin and the toilet at the moment it doesn't matter so um yeah these might change but there's obviously uh, both showing there right this bedroom so the back right hand bedroom this bedroom i don't know if you remember but this currently along here is the airing cupboard here and a walk-in wardrobe here and it's actually got a, an old chimney stack about here, uh, which we're going to have to take out because it takes up too much room and um, basically it's a bit ugly and it's got some damp issues. So uh, this then makes this bedroom meet the minimum room size. I think it ends up totaling 6.8 square metres after taking this, um, this section out and giving it to this room. So I think actually on when I've been looking at this, this is actually showing a triple wardrobe, but actually I don't think a triple wardrobe is going to fit there. It's going to have to be changed to a double. Um, and in this property as well, it's got cable TV points in certain places of, of the house. So this originally I'd put the bed this way round, um, like that. But actually when I went and had another look, the TV cable point is actually here. So I changed it around so that um, this person can watch TV and it minimizes cost because the TV point's already there rather than having to chase it in elsewhere. And that was the same actually for this bedroom here. Originally I put the bed facing uh, this way and um, to the opposite way to what it is now. But actually when I went around there, the TV point is over here. So I swapped it around. And actually in hindsight, I think that's quite a good thing because rather than having a TV on this wall and therefore if if person in this bedroom is watching TV late at night and this person is trying to sleep, then hopefully the TV being on the exterior wall won't or will disturb them less than if it was on the, the adjoining wall. So um, in this bedroom, I don't know if you remember, but we've got a walk-in, sorry, not a walk-in wardrobe, a built wardrobe across the stairs, which is you know, rather large. Um, so we don't need a freestanding wardrobe in this room. So we've just got a four drawer chest of drawers, obviously the TV, bedside table. This is gonna be a made to measure desk because there's this little sort of um, nook here and rather than it just go to waste, we're gonna try and make something of it by, by doing a, a inbuilt desk with some shelving above perhaps. Um, so that is pretty much it, but like, let me just show you this because this is really good. Um, this is actually a camera so if you wanted to sort of see how how things are looking in, in your room, you just place it to where you want to place it. You can see here, this is the sort of angle on it. It tends to be better to have it you know, around chest height and slightly pointing down so you get the best uh, view of it. Um, this you can obviously change the zoom. And then if you go to here, take snapshot, it actually shows you um, what the room is gonna look like. Uh, 
so you can get a, a good idea I think if I sort of take it out a little bit you can maybe pan out a little bit and see what that does yeah so then you can see a bit more of the room so if you find it difficult to visualize how something's going to look and is there going to be enough space to walk around I mean it's not perfect this is quite a small a small picture but it does it does provide you know quite a good insight into how things will will come out so I think that is pretty much it what about um obviously you can't put a you can't put the plug sockets on this can you but you know exactly where they are so when you're using this bit of software you should also know where your plug sockets are or are going yeah um, yeah, yes. added as well is the radiators because I don't think the radiators are on here, are they? But you no, know you where can they are. you can put you radiators can in. I've just not put them in. Um, but yeah, if you sort of type down here, I'm probably not showing you this actually. So you can write things here, and it will literally bring up. Uh, so say we put in put in this radiator, for example. Let's just put it here. Um, got to turn it round. So yeah, if we want to put that there, and then there's your radiator. So that this is the section that you put you type in all the furniture and you come up with loads of different things. If you wanted to, um, so for example, bed, uh, it comes up with all these different styles. I mean, I, I tend to not, again, like I said, not be too fussy about picking different styles because I just need to know that things fit. That's all I'm using this for. Um, but going back to what Ollie said about plug points, yes, it doesn't, it doesn't allow you to put in plug points here. So what I then do after this is I'll then print out uh, these floor plans onto paper and then I'll draw um, in different coloured pens you know um, sort of have a key on the side maybe uh, I don't know pink for radiators and blue for double plug points and yellow for TV points or whatever um, and I'll draw different plans for different tradesmen because obviously the electrician is going to need something different to the plumber the builder is going to need something different um, and what I also put on the plans when I draw them is as I said before I mean we know here that it's uh, you know, a 137 centimetre bed, but, and therefore, because it's that width, the plug point is going to go maybe around uh, 1.5 metres or 1.45 you know, metres or something like that. So it's going to go about here. By drawing on the width of the furniture and doing a key, I tend to do a key of how wide and how high and um, all them things of the different chest of drawers and etc., all them sorts of things are the electrician can actually use this information to say where you know or, or judge where i'm going to want um plug points so if i'm putting one for the tv i don't really want the, the plug point right on the floor because that might be you know difficult for the tenant to, to access but i equally don't want it too high up um, because then it will see you'll see it and it will look ugly so sort of maybe waist height when he knows that there's going to be a tv point here would be the ideal place to put it um, so yeah I'll show you the plans after I've done the ones with all the measurements and drawings on for the different tradesmen so you can then see what I'm talking about cool so hopefully you found that uh, useful uh, this software is called room sketch art it's free isn't it it's free for I think it's I can't remember if it's three or six projects but you get you know, and if you've got various emails, you can just log yeah. in and... It's a really good good tool. I'm sure there's plenty out there um, as well, the same thing. But it really, it just, it, I think it's crucial, isn't it, really, to planning out a good HMO and getting those designs um, correct. So, yeah, that's floor plans. Okay, so um, as you said, it's the 19th of July now. Um, our builders delayed the project. They were meant to start last week, actually. Um, but they had two projects uh, finishing up. So they said to us, look, can we keep the guys on site, finish those projects up, and then the start of this week, so on Monday, we can get everyone in and the, the works can sort of just be done quicker. Uh, everything's wrapped up, blah, blah, blah. So we sort of said, yeah, okay, because they should be able to make up more time. So that, was, that delayed us a little bit. But it's given us a really good um, bit of time because uh, this is what I wanted to explain is that there's a real fine juggling act between exchange and completion because solicitors never know when that's going to happen and blah, blah, blah. And, and your, our builder needs six weeks notice before he can start work. So obviously if you're trying to juggle when you're going to you know, complete on a house so that you can get in and do all the floor plans and do the measurements and get the quote ready and all that sort of stuff. But then, you know, 
the juggling act is you don't want to complete and you've bought a house and then it sits there for say four weeks while you get the quotes the plan the budgets you know everything agreed but you equally don't want to start a project and have no quote budget plan agreed and you're just going and going and spending and, and cost spiral so it's a real juggling act to get this all you know aligned so to speak mm -hmm. so when we first priced up the project to buy we obviously know using from past experience how much things roughly cost and we sort of averaged out what you know we've done in the past and blah blah, blah. so we've got a very good idea anyway but obviously we need to pinpoint that because every project's unique and different so um, essentially there's two parts to the quote which having this slight delay has allowed us to sort of um, get a bit bit sharper so we need the builders quote for all the works and all that sort of stuff and then he'll give us a schedule of works and stuff like that so we've changed some sort of specs certain specs the client wanted to do a little bit extra and blah 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 blah. so you've got that one part part and then the other part is what we've been doing is that we've got um, a big list of items such as like spatulas and cutlery and all that sort of stuff you know if you're going to buy a fridge freezer we've got a massive list like that so we need to get all the items, TVs, furniture, that sort of stuff. We need to know because you know it's quite a challenge. But we're we've got a list, and we get stuff from IKEA and all that sort of stuff. So we're pricing up this big list, so we, we know how much all that's going to cost. Um, getting a handyman quote, so we know roughly that there'll be I don't know six letterings going on doors, six door stops, blah 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 blah. So then we give it give it to him and get get a quote for that. Um, and then cleaners as well, which is actually I found quite challenging because normally I do all the cleaning, but obviously moving forward I don't have time to clean every project for free uh, as well. So it's a challenge because they can't see the size of the house, what you've got and how dirty it will be because it hasn't even been refurbished yet. So it's difficult getting a quote. But we've been doing that. We've been doing, I've been spending, um, trying to get hold of three different furniture companies. Uh, Fusion Furniture is our go-to um, furniture company and they've come out on top again. Tried to go to, I'm not going to name and shame, but I've gone to two other companies and they've not even got back to us really. Um, poor customer service. I was on the phone. They just told me and called back. And it's like you've got me on the phone. Anyway, I won't go into it. But I think we're just going to go with Fusion. Really, just absolutely top quality customer service. So we need to get furniture quotes, cleaning quotes, and all the items. So then we've got that sort of side of it, the builder side of it, and then you've got this quote. So we're sort of what they started works on Monday. We're now Thursday. Um, so we're nearly finalised that quote. And obviously they're just stripping out at the moment. So. We've, we've managed to juggle from completion, I think it was like last week, so the house was empty for a week, but it gave us you know that time to do this quote. Then work started this week anyway, so um, things have progressed quite nicely, but it's not stressful, but you've really got to be on the ball and trying to juggle it. It's like I said, you don't want to have delays and you don't want to have um, costs spiraling out of control. Um, so I don't know if you want to add anything to that, but essentially that's, that's where we're at. Yeah, I think you said it all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, hopefully you find that interesting. We're not sort of um, trying to show all the glitz and glamour of it. This is the, the real nitty gritty um, side of it. We still don't have a schedule of works from our builder at the moment, um, which I really like seeing that because it helps doing this vlog as well as making sure that you know that they're sort of on target to hit their uh, goal posts. The, the thing with the schedule of, the schedule of works, I can't get my words out, um, is that you know the builder doesn't want to say this is what's going to happen if that's going to change so the client needs to decide right I'm happy with this quote um, and then go from that point and mm. then they can do the schedule of work so it is it is a juggling act it's I always say it's a bit like a dance that everyone's mm. you know got to come in time with each other um, and that that can be tricky uh, but I suppose this week um, I've been sort of talking to the client about costs that he perhaps didn't expect. Uh, they've never done a project before, they've never done a refurb before, so they don't know how much things actually cost. And I think when you don't know, you always assume they're going to be less, and when they come in higher, you think, oh, you know, why is that? And there was obviously a few things like the chimney that was upstairs um, that was actually hidden. It was actually in that cupboard that we're taking away. I found the chimney when I was measuring up, because obviously I was measuring in that cupboard and um, found the chimney that no one else had seen. So that's an added cost um, of sort of nearly, well sort of between 500 and 1,000 pounds to get rid of that and structure the floor and you know make good and all that kind of stuff. Um, 
Which, yeah. which to jump in there, then you have the discussion of like, okay, so should we leave it in? And what happens if you leave it in? You go back to the plans, well actually that wardrobe that you placed there or whatever, then doesn't work and blah, 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 blah. So there's always that to in and fro in. Throughout a project, things can change. You've just got to be flexible and adaptable. But ultimately, the end goal is like, with the budget we've got, what is the absolute best HMO or living space that we can create that will ensure that we have as minimal voids as possible, rents all the time, and achieves the highest rent possible, and people love to live in. So it's just getting that juggling act really, isn't it? I think when you're working with a client, for example, you need to be mindful of things like them not understanding things or them not feeling comfortable with things or and and you as the project manager need to alleviate those, those concerns or you know make it so the client does feel comfortable so the other day I spent I think it was like an hour and 40 minutes on the phone with him going through things and you know at the beginning he was quite like oh you know how can this cost this much and by the end of it he was in agreement saying oh no I see and, you know be explained because one of the things that he asked me was why the electricity sorry the electrician's uh, quote was so high and actually when I've then uh, broken down what that includes because I think he thought it was just putting in plug sockets but people forget that when you're putting in the plumbing system like the mega flow and and all of that has got electrical components that needs to be done mm. by the the electrician and um, you know the fire safety stuff all that kind of stuff people forget about all of these things but when you actually lay it out in front of them and say this is what this quote entails and this is why it's so high people then you know if you've given them the time of the day to explain it they then sort of can understand it and appreciate it and accept it uh, so yes it's always really important to make sure that your client is comfortable and understands what what the project entails and where their money is being spent and if you don't have a client yourself yeah. um, <laughs> being, being that person as well so yeah we uh, this is a huge episode now so um, yeah thanks for watching uh, next time you will see what's happened at the property throughout this week so we'll see you next week